Hello and welcome. I'm Master Lama Risaji, and this is our Thursday edition of Risaji Speaks. I hope you had a wonderful hump day and you're ready to move on. And what is today's lesson? Today we're talking about seeking wisdom and knowledge. Now, this was at the forefront of what we refer to in the Lama series is Uncle Enoch's core teachings, knowledge and wisdom. So today we're going to emphasize self-improvement tips have been shared for thousands of years as Uncle Enoch emphasized the pursuit of wisdom and knowledge as a way to grow and improve oneself. Let's see what the King James Version says in Enoch about Enoch. So we talk about his, uh, Seth. Jared was his dad, lived 101 year and 62 years and begot Enoch. After Enoch was born, Jared, his father, lived 800 years and begat sons and daughters. So all the days of Jared were of himself, 962 years, and then Jared, Enoch's father, passed. Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah, but that was actually, according to Lama Siri, 165 years. After he begat Methuselah, Enoch was called to walk with God in the 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And of course, Enoch fathers Methuselah, <clears throat> which is the grandfather of Noah, who, you know, is the great flood, lived 969 years, just a few years older than his grandfather, as the oldest mortal during that time. Let's see a little bit more information on Enoch. And so the book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text ascribed by tradition to the patriarch Enoch himself who was the father of Methuselah and great-grandfather of Noah, the book of Enoch contains a unique material on the origin of demons and Nephilim and why some of the angels fell from heaven, an explanation of why the genius, uh, Genesis flood that happened. Well, it was a cleansing flood. Remember, Enoch asked Abba, whatever he does, don't flood the lands again of the earth. I think transformation is definitely shifted from water to fire, especially as regards as judgment. How do we all hear the judgment according to Enoch and his meeting with Boganathar? Uh, two incredible scholars that, when you really dig, lived in the physical body somewhere between 350 and 450. Enoch might have actually lived closer to 450 before God took him, when you realize the Bible is all there by about 100 years. So Enoch was constantly a seeker of the knowledge and understand that what we talked about yesterday about the Babylonians and Solomon that I talked about, uh, you know, uh, that was incredible. You'll understand that obviously Enoch spent time in Babylon and his nine pillars of the science of abundance that was in his 36 books. There are 36 books in our Lama Seri that are recorded 
And there's all obviously an amazing amount of knowledge, wisdom, and all, of course, that's come by his study, but just as much or more has come by Uncle Enoch's experience. You know, just think about it. You live half a millennium on the earth. You know, you're a patriarch. You're, uh, you end up uh, going to heaven. You spend time with Abba for 100 plus years in earth time. And then you come back. You talk about the children of God, the children of light. And you're asked to receive uh, precious metals, jewels, food, and drink. And you tell those people, I don't need any of that. Abba gives it to me directly. He was obviously an Asawa de Kanwali, which meant he partake directly from the nectar of the divine. Asawa de Kanwali. I partake directly from the nectar of the Lord. It's pretty profound, right? Obviously, some huge wisdom and knowledge that he had. And the key with this personal that he saw what Boganathar had established in regards to the spirituality through meditation and nature his simple yoga, later called Tai Chi Gong, the spiritual connection, health, and longevity made so much sense to Enoch. He said, now it's time for the people in their personal development to go the next step. And the next step was realizing that you are son and daughter of the Most High God. And when doing your mirror meditation, accept that calling and that he wants you to prosper and then the nine pillars of the science of abundance were bestowed pillar number one give what you want pillar number two share what you want to become and then number three pray as if it's all up to abba but work as if it's all up to you. Number four, that's right, number four, serve humanity in a way that always outpaces the compensation that you're receiving. In other words, see a person is Christ. And how would you serve Christ? Think about it. Let's suppose you had a product, good business, internet, a retail shop, what have you. Jesus Christ walks through your front door. And all of a sudden, you know it's Jesus. And you know it's the second coming. And you've got a product, good, and service. Where would your self-esteem be? <clears throat> well, most people probably would hit their knees and rightfully or have their feet like they did in India for a Maharaji or a Mahamaha or a Satguru and their head would hit the forehead. Then it they would do that. That would show a spec. But imagine that you knew who you were. You had done enough mirror meditation that you knew and you're in the process now. Now, how are you going to get across your product, good, and service to Jesus? How would you serve him if you knew it was Jesus? Obviously, you would try to do the best that you possibly could and to the highest degree that you could, right? Well, if we serve people like they're Jesus, if we go out of our way to do it, that is understanding that next pillar, the next pillar of God. Serve in a way that's three, five, ten times what you're being compensated for the service that you're offering. 
And that, my brothers and sisters, is the fourth pillar of the science of abundance passed down by Kalina. Master these first four. Your life will change forever. Your means will change your wealth will grow and one day more than King Solomon himself. Baraka Bashai, may the blessings be to you and your glorious family. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Shangri La Friday. God bless you and your family. Mm -hmm.